William Hopefully your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I welcome you to another Two Hats special of community events. Let's look in and see what's really happening. I know we have a number of people gathered here this morning. We're always pleased to have the public join us for these discussions. The Park Board is here to serve the city and the citizens of Dallas. As a matter of practice, the committees typically do not have time for public comment. And instead, public comment is a regular part of the general Park Board meeting. And that's really for the benefit of people who want to speak to the board. If you speak to the committee, the dilemma is that the full board won't get to hear you. And the committee, of course, is a subset of the board. So it was part of our trying to make sure that all voices are heard. We will follow the tradition of the Park Department and the Park Board, which is ask that those who are here for public comment sign up so that they can speak before the entire board, which will begin at 10 a.m. This committee today will be dealing with a number of topics, including park meeting uh, situation, where we have two applications. And we, of course, want representatives from those organizations have an opportunity to share with the board, and in this case, the committee, their points on topics. But I want everyone who is here as a part of uh, interest in speaking or participating in the process to understand that in the spirit of democracy, we try to give as broad of an audience as possible to as broad of a number of voices as possible. So that's why we're asking that public comment be routed towards the park board, which will begin in this meeting at about 10 a.m. Tony Becker, I don't see Tony here right now, is the person with uh, whom you'll want to sign up because that puts you into the queue uh, just as City Council has a process so that uh, all who want to speak can be heard. So with that, we'll, and I shared that with you at the beginning so you have some sense of expectation. This isn't a process of trying to prevent conversation, just the opposite. It's about making sure that not just me and my committee colleagues, but the entire board have an opportunity to uh, hear what, uh, what uh, citizens and constituents have people you see who are not here are actually not not here. Uh, it's just a bad day. Populate the full board as we get closer to 10 a.m. And there's a current committee meeting that will begin at 9 a.m. in the committee room down the hall that looks at planning and time issues. We will begin with the consent agenda items. We will focus on park board agenda item number three and number four. Uh, both involve um, alcohol permits, one uh, for Norwalk Park and the other for. Um, Swiss Avenue Mother's Day crew tour uh, at the Dorothy and Wallace uh, Savage Park. Is there a motion to consider these two items? So moved by Calvin. Is there a second? Okay. Seconded by Simon. Is there discussion on this topic? We will go to a vote. All in favor of approving these two items on the consent agenda, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries. We now want to move to uh, discussion item number one, waivers of fees for council-sponsored events. Green members, as you know, we have looked at this once or twice over the last uh, few board meetings. Uh, okay, so if you will look, Green members, if you will look behind the white pad called Administration and Finance Committee, just past the first page, which is the committee agenda, you will see a parking application submitted by Lee Gallery from an organization, Take Back Oak Lawn, which is proposing that the name Oak Lawn Park be adopted by the committee and the board as the permanent name at that location. And so I'd like to invite a representative, Mr. Gallery, or a representative from that group now to share with us briefly that application. John, uh, Oscar, you want to help us here? Yes, uh, good morning. Uh, so we do have uh, Mr. Lee Gowdy with the uh, Take Back Go Farm organization. Uh, he uh, submitted the application on behalf of the organization, and he'll be more than happy to take any questions or uh, provide any additional information at your request. We have invited the leadership from the organization that submitted the first application to be here as well. So if, if the committee has questions, this will be your opportunity after we hear from Mr. Dorries to also hear from 
the Charles Patriot Service. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, if there's any specific you'd like for me to cover, I'm sure I'm answering the questions. Um, throughout the uh, couple of years, uh, discussions in the city uh, with regards to what was then known as uh, Lee Park. Um, you know, there was, uh, I'm sure everyone was aware of the tremendous amount of discussions and that tremendous amount of uh, controversy. The uh, city had to navigate, the neighborhoods had to navigate. And uh, I want to um, uh, you know, thank uh, everyone for having those discussions. Um, for whatever happened of that, and for whatever, um, you know, uh, views you have of uh, the, uh, the, the city's removal uh, of the statute, um, setting that aside, I feel that it's not only a bit of justice, um, but a bit of, uh, you know, restoring this in a historical context to the original name um, of Oakland Park that uh, was um, given to it, uh, of course, back in um, 1906 when the uh, city purchased it um, from the uh, quiet families, uh, family there. Um, there's much to be uh, talked about uh, with regards to Oakland, and I've um, heard some uh, questions about uh, uh, you know, the pros and cons of Oturo Creek and Oakland, and uh, it seems like the broader community, which does use that, I respect the neighbors of the park, I respect the conservancy, and, and Gay, and I really would like to uh, have a discussion, uh, and that's really what I'm asking for between the two, uh, for looking at the park board naming policies, and uh, see which one that the community especially uh, wants to have represent that park the best, and one that fulfills the, uh, the policies of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, park board and parks department itself. Um, let's open this up to questions from members of the committee. I have a few that have a chance to uh, service this question. I did have a question. I wanted to ask you pretty much touched on the other one. Yeah, I think we have a mic here. Oh. No, please turn it on. Thanks. Um, I did have a question. You touched on it a little bit. I did want to know if the two groups ever sat down to discuss or to try to come up with a consensus on what would work best for both groups or the neighborhood. Have you had that? Unfortunately, those discussions did not happen. And I'm unaware if the conservancy, uh, and, uh, I know they did not reach out to me personally. Uh, and I'm unaware if we reached out to other affiliate groups that are listed uh, on our website as uh, not only founding members or partners of the organization. Okay. And my next question, if I may. Um, is that something that you all would be open to? I would love to do that. I'm just, okay, I just want to. Thank you. How do you say your last name? Dolly. Dolly. I don't, I don't want to butcher anyone's name. So, uh, Mr. Dolly, tell me about. Uh, I'm somewhat familiar with Take Back the Lawn, but tell me, tell us the committee a little bit more about your organization. Who do you represent? Who do you consider to be in your community and your government? Sure. Um, the organization itself started. Um, really kind of in the uh, wave of the uh, crime attacks a number of years ago in Oakland, and uh, it, it, the group itself uh, comprises uh, a number of uh, members of the community, the LGBT community and, uh, there, and um, what we've worked through, we've worked on a number of different projects um, regarding either public safety or um, any kind of community policing, looking after each other mutually, and so like that. We operated a number of different programs uh, we have members that uh, have worked on the infrastructure package, the Cedar Springs beautification package, that should hopefully uh, start this year. Um, and uh, looking at infrastructure and you know viewing that through a lens of uh, equity and safety, uh, public safety, and um, also in the, um, you know the general Oakland area itself, which comprises of 12 square miles, uh, as dictated by P. 193. So uh, it's not really just a sense, uh, sense of focus. Um, even though our main focus is how the entertainment district impacts the greater Oakland, uh, we do advocate on a number of policies 
that affect uh, the Oakland community and uh, specifically the LGBT community as well to make sure Oakland itself remains a welcoming um, home and a welcoming neighborhood for everyone that goes there and a safe environment for everyone who does as well. So are you a neighborhood organization? Are you a yes, nonprofit organization? Do you fundraise? Neighborhood organization. Um, we operate on, um, uh, we, we have no need to fundraise. Um, and this is advocacy work. And uh, we, uh, uh, the, all the members that work on this on a daily basis um, are uh, nice enough to uh, not require compensation for the work. We, we do your thing. <laughs> we are also very, very well-trained volunteers. Uh, um, so our job on the park board is to just oversee the management, the maintenance, the beautification. We're stewards of our parks. Parks are the most public place there is. And, and that is our job. That's the way the city wants to keep it. Certainly this park that we're talking about is a jewel in the city. I think we can all agree on that. So tell me, um, Mr. Gordy, what events or how have you all supported the park in the past? Attendance, booking events, programming. Can you give us some specifics about how you all have previously supported the park? First, I want to thank the park board. I completely agree with you. This is uh, my, of course, I'm biased since I live uh, right away from it. Uh, this is my favorite park in Dallas. And uh, one reason I think there's so much interest uh, for me personally in the community and obviously um, for everyone involved that uh, you're right, this is definitely a jewel of the city. Um, throughout the uh, uh, history of the park, and uh, there's, been, there's always a number of uh, special events there. I've been in that park for, I've lived on Cedar Street for about 15 years now, and uh, there's been a numerous amount of events, and I'm very thankful to the Exchange for hosting a lot of them. We used to hold our pride to uh, go there. Uh, many years ago, uh, now grew its capacity. Uh, Life Walk has done, done very well, and then the Conservancy has been nice enough to uh, uh, take on Easter in the park, which used to be done by the community as well. Uh, so with that, I well, thank you especially for saving that event uh, for the community as well. So this is an active park uh, within the community and within the neighborhood. Um, I mean, personally, I do visit it quite often, and I want to make sure uh, that continues as well. And I think that's what I'm sorry. Well, first of all, thank you for being very nice to see so many people going for fun park. Um, so two weeks ago, we heard from the city all the ways that they've activated the community in terms of getting their people. And maybe you can talk about how they've got going on and done that. Um, we appear to be talking to two different sets of community, and I wish we would have um, um, tried to uh, join forces to talk to um, different segments. Um, Oakland, you know, the Ticket Oakland itself um, operates an extensive social media platform, but uh, I own a small business down there uh, on Cedar Springs as well, and have for the last uh, 15 years. And one of the missions of uh, Ticket Oakland is to continue to build community networks inside the neighborhood, inside the, uh, the visitors, and inside the people and the uh, uh, people who live there, regardless of the uh, type of housing. Uh, that they uh, live in, since we're in a very high density um, area. Um, many discussions have been had um, throughout the uh, uh, community and, and doing, um, you know, once again, uh, outreach through uh, social media, trying to get opinions of uh, what people would like to see, what people would, um, you know, like to have in this park, what people would like to call this park, and where they feel that, um, you know, that the name should resolve itself too. Um, you know, specifically, I would uh, love if we had, I uh, usually uh, dread uh, when the cities are uh, called these, but, you know, in this scenario, I believe a public forum or a public hearing uh, inside the community is extremely warranted in this, so we can uh, attempt to, um, you know, find a, a consensus, find a common ground, uh, and maybe talk with each other a little bit, and um, I would definitely be in favor of something like that. Yeah. Oh, of course. Um, so I presume that the name of Turtle Creek would come up in community meetings. If that did happen, can you talk about why or one was the one that surfaced that surface was the result? Um, it didn't in our discussions. Um, of course, the you know main discussion with regards to the. Uh, restoration of the park and you know basically um, putting that park on track to making sure it's open and welcoming for everyone in Dallas 
and includes everyone in Dallas. Um, when the um, temporary uh, placeholder uh, name was put in uh, back to the original Oakland Park, um, you know, I, I believe you know many in the community thought that that was kind of the you know it made the most sense. There was no controversy that I was aware of at that time um, outside of the controversy of the internal uh, part, uh, politics of what was going on. But I don't remember any controversy of referring the name back. In fact, uh, the discussions we had, most people thought that was extremely common sense. Um, you know, because once again, it's the historic nature of the park, it's the historic name of the park, and uh, you know, we're going to be back uh, before um, you know, modifications of um, the statue were made there. Um, for trying to articulate the, the reasons why um, this name is a good name to consider. Um, as I think um, Calvert addressed, um, I, I share some of the same questions that I think others in the committee have, which is that the park board, by virtue of the city charter, is tasked with making sure that we have a strong and vital park system to serve the citizens of Dallas, and in many cases, in folks who are in the greater North Texas area, um, for me, I have to kind of put aside some of the politics and I kind of think about what is in the best interest of the park. And I'm quite impressed that early in your remarks a few moments ago, you talked about how you're a regular user of the park, how you have appreciated the work of the Conservancy through the years on programming, on making the uh, facility available for uh, meetings, because I think it reflects that you, know, you too have the same goals that we have, which is to make sure that we have a beautiful facility and that it's sustained uh, both for us but for generations to come. I think uh, everybody in the room is aware that the city does not, and it says, does not have unlimited resources. And as a result, uh, although I wish it were different, we as a park board rely with uh, considerable frequency on friends organizations and independent corporations who take on an interim contract with the park and with the city to provide a wide variety of services. Um, I could give you, if you attend these meetings, and you can see we spend a lot of our time on these partnership arrangements because each one of them have nuances to them. And in most cases, the balance of financial dependency falls more on the partnership organization, right? We have said, here's a great facility, here's a great trail, here's a great decision. We need you others in the community to take on a contractual legal obligation to pick out utilities, landscaping, capital improvements, security, parking, the list goes on and on. This is all a matter of public record. I'm not trying to lecture. This is just the way it works. If we have to fund through tax dollars and bond funds all of the operating costs and improvements for everything that's within the Dallas Park and Recreation System, the budget would have to be dramatically higher, which is falling back to the taxpayers. So as you know, and I think many of you will know, the Park Department has now for 21 years had a relationship with the Conservancy. Now I haven't been on the Park Board for 21 years, but I've been on the Park Board a number of years, and repeatedly we have found this to be a very good department. And I think you agree with that based on your comments earlier, right? I would have raised money, and I'm looking at the numbers and how much money they raised. That was a part of their application. Thank you for recognizing. Thanks. We'll hold you this morning. And so I think the challenge that I think all of us face as committee members and board members is to reconcile two applications. One from your group, which seems to be like a fair application with some justification to it. application. It happened to come in before yours, but that's almost incidental. I think what's important to me, and I'll speak for myself now, not the committee, and I certainly want the committee to have a time on this, is that I have to give undue weighting to the application from the group that has for 21 years put its heart and soul and its wallets into making sure that you and I and everyone else have a beautiful park and a beautiful facility. And so while the applications on that ones are both correctly completed or represent due process, I feel like I would be dishonorable to my mission as a park board member if I didn't give extra weighting to those who we have a multi-year history with. And um, if they say to us, as 
that's going to happen. Sometime last year, because the park will be a on conservancy now to offer that important responsibility. This name is going to work better for us from a fundraising perspective, from a services perspective, from a legacy perspective. That has to go into my calculus. So I'm, I'm doing a little bit of sharing with you my point of view, but also posing a question to you. If the Conservancy were to say to you, we'd have a tougher time attracting members, a tougher time raising money, a tougher time renting our facility, with one name versus another name, as a user of the park, where would you fall on that? Where the turtles are. <laughs> so I appreciate your comments, but I'm going to be a public gathering, so you're going to need to be recognized. Sorry, I'm just from Kansas. <laughs> Uh, first off, once again, I want to thank um, the work that uh, uh, you all do um, as, as stewards of the park and, um, you know, once again, the work that the Conservancy does because uh, they do a great job of maintaining it. And I understand the intricacies of public uh, private partnerships. The city does a lot. Um, I do myself wish it was handled a different way and wish we had uh, maybe uh, better priorities in this uh uh, city with higher uh, parks budgets to where we could do a lot more things in the city um, and that, uh, that I absolutely agree with you. Um, you know, once again, I have on the conservancy for um, you know, maintenance and beautification of the park. They do an amazing job and it's one uh, reason the park is, in my opinion, the most beautiful park in Dallas. So that is you know, highly commendable. Where I want to have to sometimes differ is, and I understand that's also mentioned in your policy, there is weight given to financial uh, matters. Um, what I would like, you know, once again to see is a, a broader discussion on where people fall, as we know where the money's fall. And I think that's a very worthwhile discussion to have, and it's a very worthwhile discussion to have in broader aspects of society, but specifically in this one right now. And you know, once you renew a request to allow, you know, not only donors to weigh in on what a community calls a park, but allow the overall community to weigh in as well. Sometimes those will be in conflict. Sometimes they will come to an understanding. And I feel if we do our due diligence, uh, we will be able to find a solution that's amicable for all people. Questions or comments from members of the committee? Mr. Doherty, as, as I was a liaison to the Conservancy for well over a year, I did know Adam live in uh, the two or three Oakland areas, but I was fairly well known. There were community meetings and, and petitions circulating. Um, were you aware of any of those? Did you attend any of the community meetings about the remaining? No, I was not. I was not notified. I was um, told after the fact that at least after one or two of them, um, by what I uh, often tend to find watches, get one of uh, uh, find watch and the ones uh, out further in the Naval um, area uh, from members there, and they were asking, you know, if I was aware of the movement that's going on and uh, you know, the petitioning process and, and, and that is where I was not aware of that, no. Because there have been several names circulated over the last year or so. This is Total Creek was one that bubbled up as supported by the neighbors. Um, did you, did, have you had any community meetings over your name or circulated any petitions? Uh, we have started circulating petitions. We received an email from, I believe, the Parks Department um, a number of weeks ago. I'm happy to get you today. They basically said, hey, listen, you know, the, uh, the services application came in first. You know, it's been put on the um, uh, committee, um, you know, the agenda uh, to discuss, and we were trying to clarify our know, policy there for a while. If there was a first come, first serve policy that we were looking uh, uh, somewhere that we couldn't find, but we did continue to work, we did uh, continue um, uh, uh, public outreach. Uh, we discussed this in meetings. Uh, we have not called an official like, hey, everyone in the community wants me to deal with our library and hash out, you know, what we think is best uh, for the park. And to the best of my knowledge, um, petition collectioning, uh, and I can be, I'll be correct if I'm wrong, uh, was done in uh, HOA meetings, uh, buildings, and, and stuff like that that surrounded the area. Okay. 
how many members do you all have? Uh, and once again, we represent an overall arching community there. We don't take membership or have membership dues or anything like that. It's advocacy and building our uh, basic community, building neighborhoods uh, with uh, who we work with, whatever, uh, the overall community. And if the park name went forward, would you all still support the park and attend events there? Absolutely. I don't think anyone is going, it's, it's not, I mean, there's going to be, the, you know, upsetness and the, and the sadness for, you know, losing, uh, you know, what's something I believe in, but no, there's never going to be no more long standing, you know, you know, damage and like that. There might be, again, some rubble feathers for a while, but uh, no, we, that community remains very committed to that part, um, you know, and the, uh, the events that go on there and the, um, the beautiful nature of it, so, you know, there's not going to be a little more fruit. <laughs> Mr. Just stay off the grass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sir, I'm going to compliment you on um, your sincerity this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know what to expect this morning, and I'm not active on social media, much to the delight of my uh, high school son. Probably not <laughs> That's his turn by himself. Um, but um, what I have heard through conversation in the last few days is that there was some very emotional messaging going on. And I'm glad I didn't actually have uh, much exposure to it because your remarks this morning are really good. They're comforting, but also they reflect the real commitment to community. And we all agree that that is the way to make this part of that community and the broader community a better place to live. Um, I, I think we are going to vote this morning because that's the way progress occurs. I'm going to make it clear that for my own vote, um, a vote in support of the Turtle Creek name is not a vote against the good work you and your organization are doing. It's not an either or. Um, you said it yourself actually much better than I could, which is you guys and gals that would support the park because the park is an important part of your community, our community, the community. And um, the conservancy, you said yourself, I'm not putting his word in your mouth, has been incredibly gracious to open the space of the physical land and building to a wide variety of events. And, and I think I speak for many of you, perhaps all of them, and I'll say this again for me, that this is not a vote against one. In fact, for me, this is really a very clear cut situation, which is which name provides us, us, the collective us, all of us in this room and community, with the highest chance for continuing the terrific facility, the terrific maintenance, and yes, the Pearl Creek Conservancy, as they are now known, has raised a lot of money, and they have a lot of members, and they have a lot of engagement. And that's a bit unknown to that, which it sounds like you are too, and you just like them, you can be a little different. And I respect that. Uh, but I, I think it's important that it's not what you're going to want to mean, or you say it yourself, that's not what this is about for you or your organization either. This is about the sustenance and the nourishment of a beautiful park and a beautiful village. This is William, hopefully your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please leave comments below or like, follow, or subscribe to us and get notices of all our videos. We love it even when you call.